Bandwidth for this podcast is brought to you by CashFly at C-A-C-H-E-F-L-Y dot com. Welcome to Mac Break Studio. I'm your host, Brian Gary. And today I've got in the house, Steve Taylor, After Effects guru, motion graphics guru, designer to the stars, producer, director, you do, all, like, like everybody out who watches this show, you do it all, you do everything. Gotta pay the bills. You gotta pay the bills. <laughs> today, you're going to show us some really cool tricks that you can do inside of After Effects that most people associate with still photography. And that's that kind of tilt shift generator, the miniatures look. Uh, I was showing you before, and we have up here on the screen, I have that uh, Tilt Shift Gen, which is an app on the iPhone, that I go in and I've got a couple of shots here. This is the taking down at LA Live as uh, this first shot. And the app is really simple. That's Griffith Park. You basically design, define the area in which you want to be in focus and everything else is, is blurred, and then it really amps the saturation and everything. Photoshop, you can do the same thing. But you're going to show us how to achieve the same effect in video yeah. using After Effects. Yeah, basically the look came from the uh, the old school way of uh, taking photographs of models. Okay. So you can imagine in a model you're above it, uh, you have a long lens, you're shooting down in little bitty things that are painted. Uh -huh. So that's where the look kind of came from. Right. And uh, it got popular in photography. And uh, now that uh, you know everybody's shooting video with HDLSLRs and stuff, mm -hmm. um, it's become very popular in video. And uh, I just thought I'd show you a few easy ways to do that in After Effects. So before you start, and as you're as you're bringing up your After Effects project. It's, it's as important to shoot the right stuff because not everything is, is applicable in terms of doing this tilt shift look. Yeah, yeah, I mean, I mean just like having a model on a table, you uh, generally want a high angle. Okay. So uh, just like looking at a model, you're looking at it from down at about 45 degree angle. So um, similar to this shot right here that I got from my stock, that's a shot of Chicago, the river and such, but it's from a high angle. Okay. Um, and it's got you know cars and maybe some people and uh, the trick is to make it look like a model. So you want to, you know, raise the contrast and saturation. We'll go through all those steps now. But you do want to emulate that angle of looking at a model. That's what makes the tilt shift so cool. And you got this from iStockphoto.com. Yeah, yeah, great resource. Okay, cool. So uh, I mean, uh, we'll take a look at this picture. And the first thing we really want to do is to uh, this uh, the uh, saturation and contrast. This picture is pretty flat. Yeah. So uh, what I want to do first is to uh, um, basically apply some color uh, correction effects. First thing we'll do is uh, take up the uh, saturation and the hue saturation effect. And uh, got a little um, uh, adjustment control here. And what you want to do is just kind of take that up till the colors get a little bit unrealistic. Right. You yeah. know? So they all have that kind of look to them where yeah. it's surreal a little bit. Yeah. yeah. So really the, the idea is to emulate a painted thing. And in little models, they're, very, they're painted bright colors. So yeah. you're going to crank that up pretty high. You can see the river kind of... Uh, yeah, it almost turns teal. Yeah, the river turns teal, the bridges turn red. Yeah, Michael um, Bay would like this. It's very orange <laughs> and teal. Yeah, so here it is before, uh, and there it is afterwards. Wow, yeah. So already you're getting that kind of painted look. Mm -hmm. But one of the other things we need to do is kind of uh, crank up the contrast so the blacks are blacker and the highlights are a little hotter. Yeah. So uh, there's a few ways to do that in After Effects, but what we'll do is we'll use color correction um, curves and, and what curves? And both of these yeah. that you've applied come with After Effects. Yeah, these aren't third-party anything. I'm not okay. using any third-party filter here. They're okay. all included here, and um, yeah, real easy to do. So basically, when I create a really subtle S curve and raise the highlights and um, darken the uh, blacks, so okay. I'm going to create a little uh, node here and raise the highlights a little bit, and then create a node here in the dark areas. Basically, in, a, in the curves, the lower on the scale represents the dark areas, and the higher part of the scale represents the highlights. Okay. Um, and so if I raise this up, you can see what it's doing to the brightness levels of the highlights only. Right. And then this can be brought down to, to really blacken those blacks. It's really crushing them. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So now I, I'll just turn that uh, filter on and off to see the effect that's off and that's oh, yeah. on. Mm -hmm. So it becomes hyper-realistic, but that's really what you want for a tilt shift. So uh, that's the basic color effects. And now the, first, the last thing we really want to do is add the blur. Okay. And uh, what the blur is emulating is a, a small depth of field with a camera. Like ultra it, small. Oh, ultra, ultra. We're talking yeah. you know, an inch or less yeah. if this was a model. So uh, really what we want to do is uh, create a depth of field, an uh, um, out of focus area in front and behind. Okay. Um, we can't really do a true depth because we don't know the depth of this camera and you know, we're not uh, working in Z space really. Right. But we can emulate the look. So what I'm going to do is uh, first I'm going to duplicate this layer, and I'm going to apply the lens blur effect. Okay. Again, another stock. Yep. 
It's uh, new with a CS3, I believe. Okay. Great little effect. It's much more organic than, say, the fast blur or the Gaussian blur. Mm -hmm. um, so I've got the radius here. This you'll have to play with depending on the size of your image. We're working in a 720 HD image here, so 15 looks pretty good for a start. Okay. Um, so now we have the, a, a blurred image on top of a, a non-blurred image, and what we want to do is mask out so we create a blurred top and bottom okay. and a gradient. There's a few ways to do this, but my favorite way is to use a mask. So what I'll do is I'll go up here and grab the uh, shape tool, and I'll create a mask in the middle just across that blurred image. Now the default, um, the default of the uh, mask is to... Um, right. is You've a, actually done the opposite of what you want. Yeah, yeah. so okay. there's a little inverted button here. I'm uh -huh. going to hit that inverted button, and what it does is it blurs everything outside of the mask. Okay, which is what you um, want to do. And again, yeah. this footage is good footage because you have foreground, middle ground, yeah, and, yeah. and background. Yeah, very yeah. easily defined. Yeah, it's like a true camera depth of field. You really mm -hmm. need foreground and background elements to see the in-focus area. Right. So uh, we've got this hard edge. If I, if I just hide the, uh, the mask, you'll see that it's yeah. very, very hard edge. So right. that doesn't quite do it. So we need to f um, feather the edge of the mask. Okay. So I'm going to turn on just to see the mask again. Um, I'm going to hit uh, Shift-Command-F to get the mask feathering. Now, we don't really need to ma uh, feather horizontal. We just want to feather vertical. Sure. So I'm going to turn this lock button off. And then let's try, uh, just as a first value, let's try 250 as a value to feather the mask. Okay. It's doing its work. And then uh, now we've got the feathering. The blur is not quite strong enough. You, it's not quite strong enough effect. Right. So I would say, let's click on this, go back up to our, our um, blur values, and maybe take this up to 25 to see what the effect is. I'm going to hide the mask, and now you're starting right. to really feel it. Yeah. Um, if I do a, a RAM preview of this, you'll see the effect. Now, this clip is a time-lapse clip, so okay. it's already got some kind of effect to it. Mm -hmm. And there's two things that you really want to do or that you could do to your footage to give it an um, ultra or hyper-realistic feel is mm -hmm. change the frame rates. One would be to speed it up, or the other one would be to just keep the same speed but change the frames per second okay. to something like five frames a second. It's, it's going to take a few seconds to render because it's a high So high would you clip. recommend, as you're looking, as looking to acquire footage to be able to do this, yeah. locked off or movement with the shot? I recommend locked off because okay. uh, just like if you were shooting a model, you really wouldn't be doing a whole lot of movement. Okay. If you're going to do movement, I would uh, keep it really subtle. Mm -hmm. If you shoot a time lapse, this stuff is great for time lapse with your HDLSR. Right. You could shoot it at a higher um, frame uh, resolution, mm -hmm. say 4,000 pixels across or whatever. And then in After Effects, you could actually do moves inside of After Effects, which would actually be a good another lesson. But uh, coming up, <laughs> yeah. Uh, so basically, you, you could uh, do a pan and scan or pan across the image, mm -hmm. you know, uh, because you shot it in higher resolution than HD. So if I just uh, play this back, uh, you'll oh, I'll just yeah. loop a couple of frames here, but you'll see the effect is uh, because it's uh, time lapse. You got this little kind of toy car feeling to it, yeah. and time lapse works great for this. This is really cool inside of After Effects. Where can we find more of you teaching us cool After Effects stuff? Well, on RippleTraining.com, I've got a new disc. Uh, it's called After Effects Fast Forward, and I basically cover 20% of the tools that you use 80% of the time with After Effects. There it is, just out. And uh, it's really helpful for those that have uh, not gotten full-fledged into After Effects or just starting out. Yeah. Uh, it'll really give you all the tools that you need to be doing um, some great work and some real creative stuff. So just like in Mac Break Studio, where we cover a whole wide array, uh, Ripple Training is also covering outside of Final Cut Studio, going to be uh, CS5, etc., other production techniques. Steve Taylor, thank you for coming in and joining us. Thanks for having and me. And thank you for watching Mac Break Studio.